Hey, what's up guys, Paul Munoz here and welcome back to this mini series of masking in ZBrush. So in this second video, I'm gonna cover a more like a productivity tip, something that you can use to speed up the workflow of masking and editing your mask using a Wacom pen or a Wacom tablet, as long as you have the express keys to bring in the radial menu. So it's more of a productivity tip, but it really helps once you get used to using these uh, menus in your workflow to speed up again the process. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so here we are in ZBrush. I'm using the default UI. This is pretty much where we left off in the previous video, and I'm using you know the same character. Now, before we jump into the Wacom settings and, and set up the, the shortcuts, which is essentially what this tip is all about, we need to have some custom shortcuts in, in our ZBrush UI so that we can call specific processes from the Wacom tablet. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down to the masking palette. Right, And if I hover over any of these uh, buttons here, you'll see that I have already assigned some custom shortcuts. So if I hover over the blur mask, it is Control uh, plus minus, so Control and minus. Sharpen mask is Control and plus. Shrink mask is just the minus button in my number pad. Grow mask is just the plus button. So these are the buttons that I want to include in my radial menu. But there are a few other things that you can include, like mask by cavity, or you know, as long as there is a button, you can assign a shortcut, and that be that be fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to assign a custom hotkey or or shortcut to any of the buttons in here. Um, I also have a shortcut for view mask, which is Control H. So I can just paint a mask and hold Control and H to hide it. Right? But other things like clear or invert the mask, that's something that I can do from the canvas. So in other words, uh, like I showed you in the first video, I can mask something like this, hold control and click once in the canvas and invert it, or control, click and drag to remove it. So I don't really need to create a, you know, a custom shortcut for this. So let's go ahead and assign a hotkey to something like the mask by cavity. So I'm gonna hold shift to expand this one. And I'm gonna assign a hotkey to this button here that it says mask by cavity. So the way that you do that is pretty simple. And we're just gonna hold the control and the alt key at the same time. So again, control, alt at the same time. And I'm gonna click on the button. So as soon as I do that, at the top of the interface, it says press any key combination to assign a hotkey or press escape or mouse button to cancel or press delete to remove any previously assigned uh, custom assignment. So again, just control alt click once on the button and the next immediate action is to assign a hotkey. So I'm going to use uh, something like control and three and that's it. So I just press control and the number three in my in the number pad. So if I hover now over the mask by cavity, it is assigned to control three. That's it, that's as easy as it gets. And now I can basically hold control, uh, I can be sculpting and I can hold control and three and Zbrush is going to automatically mask base on the cavities, right? Which is pretty, pretty handy. I'm gonna clear that up and let's move this one towards the left hand side and I'm gonna bring in the tablet properties or the Wacom tablet. So I'm pretty sure that you can do similar things with other manufacturers of tablets. Uh, I'm just gonna concentrate on the Wacom uh, settings just because it's what I use and what I would recommend, but I'm pretty sure you can do the same thing with other tablets. So these are the Wacom properties and I have basically a device, a tool, and an application. So the device is the Cintiq, the current Cintiq that I have. Um, the tool is in this case, uh, ProPen 3D. And the main difference between this ProPen 3D and ProPen is that the one that I'm currently using has an extra button, which is a button used to orbit around 3D application, but there's no, no magic or real difference between them. It's just that it has an additional button here that you can see, right? So I have three buttons, that's all. All right. So, and obviously we're gonna select the application that I have open, ZBrush. Uh, I also have ZBrush Core open, but or oh, ZBrush Core Mini open, but I'm gonna keep it to ZBrush. And that's it, you just have to select the Pro Pen or any pen that you are using with your Cintiq. If you have an Intos or any other tablet, you just select it from here, select the application. So let's go ahead and click on this dropdown to select which action I wanna trigger when I press this button at the top of my pen. So I'm gonna click on that and go to on-screen controllers. And I'm gonna click on, Let's go for a radial menu. We can change that later. I just wanna show you that I wanna select an on-screen uh, an on-screen controller, right? And now we can go back to the EK remote. Uh, again, if you don't have a Cintiq, this should be just part of the express keys, uh, part of the Intuos, but in my case, it is a separate uh, device. So I'm gonna click on that. And here's where you can go and select what the touch ring does, what the express keys of the control does, or the 
on-screen controller. So this, this one is the important one, right? So I just went to the tab that says on-screen controllers and all we have to do is select the one that we want. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm gonna create a new one. So I'm gonna click on this plus button and I'm gonna call it um, masking tools ZBrush or ZB, right? And then you can choose what type of visuals you, you're gonna get. So I prefer the radial menu, I think it's nicer, uh, but you can also have like buttons like this, this type of layouts, and you can change the size of the button. I'm gonna go for a, not something that big, but something like this. And I'm gonna leave the display at cursor enabled. So that means that when I press the button in my pen, whatever my cursor is, this radial menu is gonna appear. So I think that works a lot better for this type of workflow. I'm gonna click OK. And that's it. Now we have eight different sections or pie menus within that um, that radial menu that we can assign, right? So if you don't want all of them, you can remove them. I'll show you how, but I'm just gonna concentrate on assigning the, the main ones, right? So I'm gonna go to the one at the top. You can see that with the little icon that this one is the one at the top. I'm gonna click on this drop down. And this first option that says keystroke, that's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on keystroke. And all I have to do is clear and press the plus sign in my number pad. And you can give it a name. So the plus is to, uh, I already forgot. <laughs> so let's go back to zero and double check what I assigned already. So yeah, the plus is to grow mask. And uh, let's go back in here. So let's call this one grow. I'm not going to type grow mask because this is a menu just for masking. So I know that grow, it relates to mask. I'm going to click OK. And let's go ahead and do the same thing for, let's say, the bottom one. So I like to have visual cues as to what I assign. So if I go up, that grows the mask. If I go down, like this one, it will shrink the mask. So let's go to keystroke, keystroke, keystroke. And let's do the same thing. Let's clear. Let's press the minus button or the minus in my keyboard, um, my keypad, and I'm gonna call this one shrink. In capitals, click OK, and that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the same concept for uh, blurring the mask and sharpening. So I'm gonna blur the mask with the, the left one. So click on that, keystroke, and that's gonna be plus minus, or control plus minus, and that's gonna be blur. Okay, and let's do one more for sharpening. So sharpening is gonna be on the right-hand side. Clear, and that is with Control plus. And let's go ahead and name, name it Shrink, oh, sorry, Sharpen. Click OK. So now we have Grow, Sharpen, Shrink, and Blur. And just to you know show you the one that we assigned to the Mask by Cavity, uh, let's add it to this one right here. So I'm gonna click on the same thing, same deal. And it is control three, the one that we decided, control three. And this one is called cavity. And that's it. As you can see, it is very easy to assign anything that you want for the uh, EK remote or express keys on screen controls in the Wacom uh, the Wacom tablet. Uh, this might look slightly different depending on your drivers and depending on your tablet, but for the most part, it is the same thing. You just need to find where is the on screen controls to assign it. All right, so um, just before I finish here, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these ones. I don't wanna see any of that. So Wacom properties, I'm just going to disable this one, this one as well, disable, disable, and yeah, just leave these five, right? So these uh, these keys are assigned to that radial menu, which is called the masking tools. So now that we have assigned this one, we can go back to, let's say the Cintiq, to select our Pro Pen, right? And before, remember I just had a radial menu. Now, if I click on this drop down, go to the on-screen controls, now we should have that menu that we created before called the masking tools ZBrush. So when I click on that, and now in when I use ZBrush, because that's the, the selected application, whenever I use ZBrush and I have my Pro Pen and I press this, this button at the top, it's gonna bring in that radial menu. So let's go ahead and close that and let's use that or see how this is working in action. So I don't have to go to my masking palette anymore. I can keep, you know, if anything, I can just close this up and then uh, press the tab key as well so that I can work a little bit cleaner in here. And, but before I, I do that, let's go ahead and, oh, let's just leave the, the clay brush. All right, so I'm gonna show you exactly what uh, 
<laughs> the menu looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and press the, that button in my pen. And <laughs> that's a little bit too big for, for my taste. So let's go back to the properties. And let's go to the EK remote or EK remote. Go to the on screen and let's select that radial menu. And let's go ahead and click on this um, icon here to edit it. So let's edit that, make it a bit smaller. Um, something like that. That should be the default one anyway. Click OK. And that's it. So let's do it again. I'm going to press that button from my pen. And as you can see, whenever I press that, that radial menu appears. And that is nothing to do with ZBrush. Again, that's just from my tablet, uh, from the Wacom tablet. But it is a very quick uh, and easy way to work. But you know, you don't have to resource to the keyboard to use the shortcuts or the palettes. You can be working like this. And you know, you can create a masking, then press the button and you can blur that mask, right? So that again, you can blur that mask or you can sharpen it or you can shrink that mask and grow it or clear that mask and just click on cavity. And that way you can mask out the cavity. And let's say if you want to blur that cavity, you can also bring that in and blur that mask. You can invert it. And now we can just bring in the inflate. Let's also hide the mask just so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, the deformation palette, and I can just target those crevices and deflating them or inflating them to create weird details like that. So obviously this is not um, relevant in this case, doesn't really work that well, but it's just to show you that I could be working on something like this and accessing this, this panel. Now, one uh, really cool thing that you can do as well is let's say that you want to work on, you know, refining this area. So I'm going to mask this portion of the head, right? And let's go ahead and bring in this. And I want to blur it so that it is not as strong when I use something like the clay brush. So I'm going to click on blur. And as soon as I do that, obviously the radial menu disappears. And so I can just go back and start sculpting. But if I go back, um, I can also blur it a few more times. So if I bring in the menu again, or this radial menu, you also have this icon to pin that to the, to the screen. So I can just pin that, right? And I can move this around whatever I want to, and I can start working, let's say in, in a specific area that I'm, I know I'm going to use all of these controllers uh, quite often, I can just go ahead and blur that a few times. So I can just keep blurring it, or I can sharpen that mask just by clicking a few times. I can shrink it, sharpen, shrink it, and maybe blur it a little bit. And now I can toggle this off so that next time that I click away, this is going to disappear. Let's remove it and invert the mask, and now I can start adding some volume. But there is a mask restricting where I can add that volume, and it's very, very, very soft, right? Let's clear that mask, and then a bit of smoothing, and there we go. But that's pretty much it. It's more about productivity than um, anything else. <laughs> it's just about how to set this up. All right, so hopefully you have found this productivity tip useful. Again, this is something that you can utilize across multiple software, not just ZBrush. This is more of a, a pen for the, the Wacom tablet uh, tip and productivity tip. But yeah, it is very, very useful. So in the next video of this series, I'm going to cover how to create your own custom mask. And you don't want to miss that one. It's really, really cool. So I'll see you in the next video.